Hey everyone and welcome back to another Tesla weekly video for today. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend so far. So as always, we're going to go over the numbers out of China, out of Europe, and then we will have to talk about the EV tax credit. Will it impact Tesla negatively if it gets removed? Is it a positive thing, etc, etc. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Now currently, Tesla year to date is finally outperforming the market. It's up around 29% year to date and it's back above a trillion dollars in market cap. Now, the majority of the moves came in the last three months, actually in the last three months, it's up 49%, and in the last month, it's up 46% with a huge, huge move, of course, after the elections. With a huge move, of course, after the elections. Now, currently, if we look at forward PE, based on what the analysts are expecting, well, forward PE sits at 105.3 times, EV2 sales 9.1 times, EV2 EBITDA 51.5 times. So yeah, definitely not the cheapest one out there. Currently, if we look at the average analyst price target, that sits 28.3% lower than the price we're at today. So are you buying? Are you selling Tesla stock these days? Let me know down in the comment section below. Me personally, I have taken some profits on Monday. So there is that. I still have a big position in Tesla. It is still my number one position in the portfolio. So before continuing, if you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If not, we really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and end up in comments with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So as always, let's start with the Tesla China weekly insurance numbers. For the members of the channel, you probably already know this one because you get those numbers on Monday or Tuesday. So the number for the week was 17,200. As you can see, we're now up 4.2% quarter over quarter, and year to date, we're still up 7.4%. So that's quite good. China is definitely one of the most positive things that has happened with Tesla in 2024. As for the split, we've got 10,710 Model Y sales and 6,530 Model 3. So a solid rebound in sales for the Model 3. If we again compare the Model 3 to the Xiaomi SU7 and the Xpeng Mona M03, it's another good week for the Tesla Model 3. The sales numbers for Xiaomi SU7 came at 5,500 and the Xpeng one 1,750. Looking at worldwide BV sales by groups, we've got Tesla, BYD, and the Volkswagen Group. Tesla is at 71.5% of last year's total sales. BYD at 74.3% and Volkswagen at 65.7%. Looking at Tesla sales from these European countries, so the UK, Norway, Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Czech Republic, and Iceland, sales numbers came in at 2,700 for the week, were up 15.7% week over week. Year to date, for those countries specifically, sales are up 10.4%. And quarter over quarter currently we're up 19.1%. So that's definitely a positive. Of course, we know Germany, France, these types of countries, which are pretty big for Tesla, are not doing that great in 2024. So all in all, I think Q4 is going to be one hell of a quarter for Tesla. They said that they expect to beat last year's numbers, 24, 23, a slight increase. So that means that, well, deliveries for Q4 will have to be, I think, around 511, 512,000, which would be a monster quarter. Now, with regards to 2025, 2025, they said in the last earnings call, we should expect between 20 and 30% volume growth, right? How are they going to do that? A refresh Model Y, launch of new vehicles, more affordable ones as well, right? That's the main aspect, plus, of course, lower interest rates should help with that. But what happens if the EV tax credit disappears? What happens if you do not get $7,500 off? Will Tesla reduce the price themselves? Will the new affordable model ones basically take care of that issue? What's the game plan here? If you don't know what I'm talking about, apparently Trump wants to kill the EV tax credit. Here's what we know. So President-elect Donald J. Trump wants Congress to repeal a $7,500 electric vehicle tax credit. Doing so would hurt American automakers. I think it will hurt the competition for sure because, well, they're not really selling that many EVs and they're not profitable when it comes to EVs. 
The electric vehicle tax credit is disliked by another Trump associate, Elon Musk, who owns Tesla. He said in July that getting rid of the tax credit would hurt Ford, GM and other competitors to Tesla. Mr. Trump cannot unilaterally eliminate the electric vehicle tax credit. That's because they are part of the Inflation Reduction Act, which President Biden signed into law in 2022. Congress would have to amend it or pass a new law to erase the credits. How do the credits work? So under the law, consumers can lower the purchase price of an electric plug-in hybrid or fuel cell vehicle by up to $7,500 for a new vehicle and up to $4,000 for a used one. There are some restrictions. To qualify, buyers must purchase the vehicle for their own use, not resale. There are some other things as well. The vehicle must be assembled in North America and its batteries must also be built in North America. It must also meet sourcing requirements for lithium and other critical minerals. You can go on the website and check it out. Now, back in July, Elon Musk replied to a tweet talking about subsidies. He said, take away the subsidies, it will only help Tesla. Also, remove subsidies from all industries. So my question here is, how many of you have bought a Tesla this year because of the tax credit? How many of you actually know about this, that it can reduce the price of your car by so much? Because believe it or not, if this thing was really working, right? Wouldn't we have seen a huge increase in sales, in EV sales specifically, pure EV sales? Tesla should have gone up by a lot, right? Of course, we can say and that's definitely a good point to make. The fact that, well, interest rates are so high, so car sales have not gone up as expected. Okay, I agree. But again, how big of an impact is this EV tax credit really? For Tesla, will it be an issue? No, it definitely won't help that much, let's be honest, for Tesla if it gets removed. It will definitely not help the competition at all. But to me, Tesla is not competing with other American EV makers. Tesla is competing with Chinese ones and Tesla is competing with ICE vehicles. And ICE vehicles are competition. In Europe, in the United States, there are still competition, especially in Europe, by the way. In Europe, I mean, electric vehicles are not cheap at all. And if you want to, well, solve the issue of, oh, EVs are not affordable, then basically inviting China to dominate that market by removing the tax credits. So companies like GM and Ford and Rivian and all the others will not be able to make them affordable, right? So you're basically going to let China win. Is that Trump's plan? I don't think so. And then Elon Musk said he has no issues if they remove the subsidies for EVs, right? But then you also have to remove the subsidies for all the other industries. So is that going to happen? Or is only the EV side going to get hurt and all the rest will still get the subsidies? Because that's not fair, right? If we're here to save money for the budget, then you can get tax cuts and etc., etc. Then why not go across the board, right? Why only tackle the EV tax credit? I can agree with people say, oh, I don't want to be forced to buy an EV. I 100% agree with you. Nobody has to force you to buy an EV. You will buy an EV if you like it, if it's more affordable than a nice vehicle. The cost of owning one is more affordable. You like it better, etc., etc. That should be the reason to buy an EV. Plus, of course, you want to live in a place with, with clean air. Okay, makes sense. But the government should not be allowed to say, oh, you have to buy an EV. Otherwise, we'll confiscate your car. You will be fined, etc., etc. No, that, that, that just doesn't make much sense. Then we also have to talk about the regulatory credits. Now, Trump is president of the United States. Then the United States, you have states. So some things go state by state as well. And for the regulatory credits, it's something that happens around the world. It's not just the United States. So Tesla will still generate quite a lot of money from regulatory credits. But... It being removed, going back to the point of it being removed, me personally, I don't view this as a bullish thing, right? Because it will not accelerate sales of EV sales of Teslas at all. No, it will make them a little bit more expensive, actually. Unless, again, unless Tesla reduces the prices, but then margins will get hit. Yes, even if Cox continues to come down. I mean, we're reaching a limit with that one as well. Plus the more affordable models for next year. What is it going to be? 
because I don't think we're going to get a $25,000 car. At least that's not what I understood in the last earnings call, right? So yeah, what's going on here? What's, what's going to happen? I don't know. Even if he wants to remove it, it's probably going to take a while. And yeah, that might boost sales in the short run, right? Because everybody's going to want to buy one because you're still getting that $7,500 discount, let's say. Not everyone, but if you qualify for it, you will get it. Plus, if we're being honest, why isn't Tesla advertising this, right? Why aren't they screaming on the top of the roofs and saying, if you buy a Tesla right now, you get $7,500 if you qualify. Why isn't that happening? Why hasn't that happened actually? Because interest rates are coming down. So we cannot use this excuse over and over and over again. It's still high, but it's lower than before. It's expected to come down even further in 2025. So yeah, that's just my opinion, of course. Uh, could be completely wrong. You can disagree. That's fine. Let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, to those saying, oh, this is, this is bearish for the rest, but bullish for Tesla, it definitely won't help the other EV makers in the United States. It will help China, that's for sure. But to say that, oh, it, it's, it's definitely bullish for, for Tesla, no, it's not. No, it's not. Now I know you will say, oh, but the future of Tesla is not by selling cars, it's autonomy. Okay, but that future is not now, right? Th that future is not already in 2025. Okay, could be that we were getting autonomy maybe quicker because we'll have less regulation and stuff like that. Fine. But I still think that selling cars is quite important for the next couple of years at least. So yeah, sue me. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Yeah, more of a discussion type of video. So let me know down in the comment section below what you think about this, what you think will happen, bullish, bearish, all of that. Do mention it in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.